Welcome to Land a House. I know this is not a tech channel, but I want to give my review of the Dell XPS 15. This is the 9570 laptop, and I have to say, I'm quite impressed with this thing. So to go over the specs of this machine, I have the 8th generation i7 8750H 6 core processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, has a 1 terabyte hard drive, the 1050 Ti 4 gigabyte graphics card, and of course the 6 cell 97 watt hour battery. I decided not to go with the i9 processor. Apparently there's a thermal throttling issue that slows down the machine and I decided to go with the safer route with the i7. The ports on this machine are very important to me, especially the full-size SD card reader. It has an HDMI, which I have used several times on our TV at the house. It has two regular USB-A, USB 3. It has a Thunderbolt 3 port as well, which I've not used that yet, but I may in the future. This laptop has a very thin profile. I like that a lot. It fits into my TomTok bag and uh, is easily stashed into a car seat or a backpack. When I was looking to buy a computer, one of the main selling points was ports. Having a full-size SD card reader was key. Because my cameras all use the SD card, I needed to have that so that I wouldn't have to have an SD card reader stashed in my bag. Having the USB 3 is also important, and uh, whenever I looked at the Mac and saw that they only had the Type-C, I was uh, just completely turned away from using one of those. The battery life is pretty impressive. I've been able to get somewhere around eight to nine hours of use with video editing. Now, when you start exporting, it definitely drains the battery pretty quick. Definitely recommend plugging up to a power source when doing that, but as far as just making basic cuts or if you're using a Word document or just browsing the web, this thing will last most of the day. The keyboard took a little bit of getting used to. My PC has a regular sized keyboard with lots of feedback and my old Mac has a keyboard with just a little bit of feedback and this is a comfortable middle ground with uh, just enough feedback. The trackpad is great. It has a matte finish on it, which definitely prevents you from just sliding in the wrong direction. So it has just enough resistance or friction to, uh, to feel comfortable. The button clicks are perfect and I've had no problems whatsoever with that. I know that fingerprint readers have been around for a long time, but this is the first machine I've owned that has one of those. And it's quite nice to just uh, place your finger up there and it will unlock the machine for you and you're good to go. I like the charging cord length. This thing definitely is long enough to reach from outlet to the couch or across the room to a table. Uh, definitely am happy to have that. And one feature that I do enjoy is that there is this piece of cord right here that goes up to the wall. Then it has your, char your uh, converter and then it goes on to the computer. And I say that because on the Macintosh or the, the Apple, it's this piece connected directly to the wall. It's heavy and uh, it's awkward, bulky. So I'm glad that they have this little piece here so that the actual uh, converter can be on the ground. And lastly, for the pros, the screen is crystal clear. I really enjoy the, uh, the display on this machine. Even though I opted not to go with the 4K, the resolution and color is just top notch on this display. Now to go along with these pros, there are a few cons that I have thought up that um, some of them are just kind of an inconvenience and some are really annoying. So here we go. 
First thing on the list, webcam placement. This thing is terrible. It's at the very bottom of the display and it looks up your nose. So if you're going to be communicating with somebody uh, through video chat, you would want to put this thing up on eye level up here just so the camera is facing your face and not up your nose. So that is definitely uh, an inconvenience. I'm starting to get into Character Animator from Adobe and uh, I'm gonna have to buy a webcam because that thing, um, it makes my character think I'm always looking up. <laughs> so uh, definitely an issue with the webcam. Another irritating thing is that the power plug always has the light on if it's plugged in. And when I mean plugged in, I mean, if it's connected to the wall outlet, this is gonna be on. So there's no real indicator of it's charging or not charging based on the power plug. And uh, I just, in the past, have preferred if the light comes on when you plug it up to the laptop. While working with video, I've noticed that the fans in this machine can get quite loud. I've actually um, been wearing earbuds and thought, is it raining outside? Pull it off and go, oh, no, it's just the fan noise. So quite loud, and I'm guessing that's because the uh, bottom here, even though it has a good bit of uh, perforations, maybe I guess you call it, it's uh, I guess still not getting quite enough air in here. The keyboard has a backlight, which is a very handy feature if you are typing at night, and there's only two settings, on and off. And I would prefer if it had a few ramp settings to either be uh, somewhere in the middle between on and off, but that's just a personal preference but it would be nice to have some variety in that. When opening the laptop, there is no real seam between the lid and the base. So you kind of have to just, just fumble with it until it opens. It'd be nice if there was some kind of indention that would allow your thumbs to just simply get in there and open it up. Another big con, which is right up there on par with the webcam placement, is the placement of the speakers. They are on the bottom of the machine facing down. And so when you have this on your lap, you pretty much muffle all the sound. I've decided that earbuds are really the only way to go when editing on this machine. And the last thing is that the display does not dim all the way to black. A lot of times I will finish my edit on a video and I want to export during the night or upload during the night and so uh, I start the upload or the export and I cut the brightness on the screen down as far as I can. And sometimes it'd be nice to have a totally dark screen with the machine open and still running. Um, just so I know that it's on, I can just tap that light up one button, check it out, see if it's still working and then tap it back to dark. Once again, it's just a personal preference, but uh, be something nice to have in this machine. And that's my review of the Dell XPS 15. I have exported eight videos on this so far, and then just general web browsing. I did write a uh, three-page Word document, and uh, so far, no problems whatsoever. If you're looking for a great machine, I definitely recommend checking out the Dell XPS 15. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and uh, do subscribe. This is not the typical type video I do here on the channel. Normally it's woodshop stuff, but I uh, just wanted to share my thoughts on this editing machine. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.